www.technicantica.com and yes it's a productive week um, I did uh, I did already a couple of videos this week which is okay um, it's a bit quiet uh, this week so many people are away uh, singing along and whatnot so when I have time I I managed to record some videos um, first of all well second of all after the intro I'm extremely sorry for those of you uh, whom I have not answered uh, emails uh, this was because I had a, a problem with the server I don't know what happened but all the replies I wrote uh, all of a sudden they, they didn't reach the you know the the, 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 the steam areas and uh, uh, there was this bloke that contacted me through Instagram and told me oh no you did not reply to my email and uh, yeah then I checked and God knows when that happened and I've been trying to catch up so if I have not replied to you um, I will I will okay so I, my apologies all right so let's go down to business nasality uh, yeah twang not twang I did a video on twang and uh, facial you know resonances but now we're gonna go to the extreme and I'm we're, we're gonna talk nasality I was talking to um, one of my students and uh, he's very big on, on musical theater that's why also I made the the, the, the sort of preliminary belting video and uh, he basically told me that nowadays uh, in in the musical theater business everything is like you know everything is about the nose and uh, unfortunately in the operatic stage that's it's been that's been kind of a fashion for a long time now now what's the problem with that well, the problem with that and this I know this is going to be a very big statement and uh, you, you might draw your own conclusions and you might say oh that's because you know you 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 were not uh, um, celebrity or you didn't reach you know the I uh, don't the status that the, these guys nowadays have you know these big names well maybe you can draw your own conclusions I'm, I'm not talking about myself I'm talking about the world the operatic world and uh, perhaps the musical theater world as well but in the operatic stage what is happening is that the audiences are getting used to uh, uh, basically a shallower sound and a more like mask orientated sound and uh, since the audiences are getting used to that they accept that as a standard and they praise that so all these big names not all of them right because uh, you, you have some some tenors for example that sing like a, like an old dog and they're making big money there right uh, and you know exactly who I'm talking about and this is not hate this is just my vision about it and you know take it or leave it but for the, for the most part of it we have male singers that are following that path of you know a very famous baritone saying oh, this is the the health of your voice this is the health of your voice don't lose the health of your voice and uh, then you have tenors that basically ah, they just you know shove it out at, at their noses big time and they are making big bucks that shouldn't be a problem wouldn't be a problem if audiences didn't get used to that sound and then uh, you know very light tenors are performing big lyric roles such as you know a guy that sings Donizetti like a master and uh, Bellini Rossini is now banging away Puccini and it doesn't make any sense uh, and it doesn't make any sense especially if you remove the microphone that is somewhere hidden in there uh, so going back to the words of uh, the, the great uh, Giacomini to sing in the theater you need a theater voice and eh, is not a theater voice and uh, mind you again Alfredo Kraus had a great voice with a sort of a nasal quality to it but it was nowhere near what we see and hear today okay having said that 
why am I bringing this nasality business on board? And I'll start with male, male voices. Uh, lately, I find students that they um, come to me for lessons, for help, whatnot, and immediately uh, th the whole eh business come along, especially either on their upper middle voice or right on the sort of, you know, you say passaggio, nah, whatever. So, but you know what I'm talking about. What? Why is that happening? But my take is that these people have been taught that actually supporting the voice, uh, especially in those risky areas, so to say, they need to block something so they feel s something organic. And thus, it's as if the sound emanates from here and then goes wherever it has to go. And then uh, that's something that I myself experienced back in the day, my old tuition, and it would sound something like this. If I were going to, uh, let's say, a G, right? And I would do an arpeggio like this. Yeah, so right here. And I would go. And instead of covering, I would just access that you know masked it would uh, I might exaggerate but it would be something like that and that's how I did it all right or maybe I would start and that was making that sort of break uh, what is happening there why this sound becomes mm, as Paddy de Venturi put it quite clearly, fixed, so it's not alive, and uh, it's not extremely beautiful, right, so to speak, and actually it creates a lot of constriction, because the soft palate is totally collapsed, right, and I have I have shown this in, a, in, a, in previous videos, so I, I don't think there is any need to show it again. How do we properly in, in an operatic background. So, uh, because maybe musical theater belting, I will make another video on it because I think I left many, many things unsaid in the last one. I would usually as an operatic singer, as a classic, cl classically trained singer, I would go and I would cover this note. Okay. So I would go la. Okay, so that's a cover note, and that's what we call legit voice. So compare this, la, I try to grow it and I can't, I can't, that I can, all right? And it, it, the sensation is like a thicker sensation that the voice, it's not that more effort. No, it's just a thicker sensation. Mind you, as we were saying in the uh, belting video, I can sing this note open, and that would it would be equally supported and equally um, yeah open, right? So I would go la, but now there's no nasality there. The sound is open. This in an operatic context would be too much like in your face, but yet again, there is no, uh, is not constricted, restricted. So that's the whole game. What do we have nowadays is a lot of, of, of singers, both tenors and baritones that immediately they cling on that uh, to support their voices because uh, if they start, at least when they, they start studying with people such as myself or the same school, they find that this pharynx is so open that they don't know where to place their voices and they don't know where to support their voices. And thus, when they get like panic attack, they go into this area and hang it there. And there you go. It's the, 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 the sort of a survivor's uh, mechanism. So once again, people produce this sound and they go into these high notes with this sort of high mix, you know, they could, you know, if I try an, an A, I don't know if it will work for me anymore, but. 
Un dolce risoro, un dolce risoro. So you're singing Mozart, and I was like, ah, you have this tiny little, you know, uh, thin sound there, and it doesn't convince anybody. And yet again, you're gonna have many directors, conductors, that are gonna say, oh no, that's too big, no, no, lay back, lay back. And I'm sure if any of my students watch this video, they know what I'm talking about. So, um, now let's go to female voices. What happens to female voices is more or less a, a similar thing, but a, a bit lower or higher, depends on what you think, is, you know, it's an octave uh, difference for, for women. Uh, First of all, they do not explore their belting, their call, their chest register enough and they jump immediately to head. But when they have to go to chest and they have been told not to because it's a vulgar sound, is ah, to sound like a dude that you should in a way. I mean, and I always say that the, the most unbelievable uh, situation would be, for example, to have uh, Tita Rufo, Caruso, Ante Trazzini singing um, the, the Trovatore uh, Terzetto because with Tita Rufo and, um, and Caruso you wouldn't know who is the baritone and who is the tenor same way as when you listen uh, Si Pelcel in Otello you, sometimes you, you get lost who is Tita Rufo, who is Caruso but with Tita Trazzini just banging those chest notes uh, the, those sorry those notes in in chest voice uh you would be like why well, is she the tenor is she the baritone is she the soprano mind you that would be quite anecdotal so when they get into this area and i would say that the sarana g a flat maybe f and, and they know they cannot bring their voices their head voices down so much they immediately ah they go ah okay and then they flip whilst uh, uh, you know a big soprano mezzo not big but the proper soprano mezzo would do this then they would start you know they would start mixing around I would say A A B flat and then and that sort of head voice would carry that residue if you may of chest and that's making those um, high notes really thick and resonant because of the pharyngeal resonance now i know it's a long introduction but it, it is something i needed to get off my chest how do we correct nasality right uh i've seen many people oh yes you paint your toes a bit that you cannot go there Bollocks, bollocks, total bollocks. Um, as I said in the French video, glottal strokes. Why? Because glottal strokes immediately, as I stated in other videos, they are going to set everything in motion just the right way. Your larynx, your soft palate, the entire thing. Okay, uh, it's gonna be really tough for you to go ah, 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 and they go ah, ah. It's gonna be so noticeable that immediately you're gonna correct it. So if I go here, and then I try to go nice out, the sound is gonna be so distinctive. The sensation is gonna be so distinctive that that's it. Same with uh, uh, basically the tongue in. Oh, oh, oh. If I go nasal, uh, 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 it's trapped, okay? So these exercises are going to, you know, set everything in motion. Nasality, forward resonance, whatever you want to call it, mask is a color. Marcello set, Marcello Dixit, not me. I follow his uh, path. Now, uh... After all these sort of glottal strokes and stuff, if you want to do scales and you notice that your voice is getting nasal, whatever the height is, I would start with a glottal consonant, either a G or a K. Why? Because those, um, those consonants lift your soft palate. 
you might find that in contemporary te contemporary teachings, um, people advocate for this ng and they you know the typical but you get, you're already there na 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 and the, the soft palate is collapsing and then you are trying with that G to lift it. Well, why would you start, you know, nasalizing from the beginning? It's just ridiculous, honestly. So it's the sense nay 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 nay. Okay, bless Brett Manning and and whoever you know is doing that. At least for the operatic stage, and to my mind for the Broadway state stage, don't do that. No, open, open, open. So these guttural um, consonants are going to help you lift that soft palate. So either insert one of those consonants before each syllable, each vowel, and ascend any scale you want. If we take an arpeggio, ga 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 See, it immediately, if you notice, it's going to take it back. It's going to leave that soft palate. Same, you know, you, you keep ascending. If we were to have, ah, all right. Uh, if we go higher, so A flat. Ga. Is going to cut it for you okay now if you want to use a K is exactly the same business that k k k is gonna leave your soft palate um, and again either you interpolate it every single uh, note or vowel or just you know in between the uh, the scale all right so another helpful um, helpful uh, tip I would say here is that if you if you notice that your larynx is raising or is actually shooting backwards because of this collapse, then use a dark vowel. U is always the best. U is the vowel. So if you combine this K with an U, chances are you're gonna, you know, manage that thing. Uh, mind you, for women, this might lead into jumping into head voice too soon. So be careful with that. You might need to open the vowel to stay put on that chest. So an example of this K with a U would be this. Here is where most tenors would go. Ah! So you go. Nasality, this sort of twangy mask business is going to jump in possibly whenever you panic and you find yourself defenseless because you know the, the voice is not finding a place. Well, voice placement, to my mind, is a big mistake. Uh, I always say the same bloody thing. The voice is the worst of mistresses and it's going to rebel against you. Um, it's like, you know, what I was telling one of my students, Chuck, and it's like, you know, it's like, <laughs> sorry, your wife, your wife would lovely, you know, and your wife, husband, doesn't matter, you know, would lovely, you know, lovingly, sorry, um, cook for you. But the minute you tell her or tell him to cook for you, he's going to say, no way, just because, all right? So the voice is the same. That's right. Placement. Hello. All right. Okay. Video is long enough for today. Um, I hope it helps and you get rid of that nasality that is going to make that structure soft palate collapse and apply these tools and I really hope they help. So if you like the video, there you go, like and subscribe, the thumb, you know, like, subscribe, um, leave a comment if you will. Uh, if you do, don't like the, the content of the video, please do not watch it, don't get offended. Once again, if you need any help, you know where to find me.
Bye for now. Have a, have a great day. Great day. Bye bye. <laughs>